There's different kinds of psychiatric disorders. There are the, the really full-blown psychoses, like schizophrenia, mania, where there's really disorganized thinking, and, uh, and, and people, I think, have uh, run across this in their, in their life, uh, people they know. But there's a whole other class that are called the personality disorders. And these are, are much more controversial, whether they exist or not. And partially, it's because of, you know, of the 10 or 12 of these personality disorders, there's overlapping symptoms. And, and so antisocial personality disorder, narcissism, you know, malignant narcissism, for example, and psychopathy, they overlap a lot. So people would say, well, psychopathy and in fact malignant narcissism by themselves don't exist. So there's, it's better to talk about traits. But nonetheless, People use the term uh, psychopathy, and it's or psychopath. I or mean, it's like it's sort of a colloquial term at this right, point. Right, psychopath or sociopath, uh, and people differentiate them. But there's also a question whether you can differentiate those. I mean, I've talked to uh, many of my uh, psychiatrist colleagues, and they say, "Well, it doesn't exist, does it?" When I ask them, "Is what's the difference between a sociopath and a psychopath?" They go, "Well, do they really exist?" How can you differentiate them? So you have to get into the traits and see uh, yeah. what, like, what the specific things are. Right, to, and that's the scale that Hare. Yeah, had. The, and so Robert Hale developed this wonderful scale, and it was really first targeted for adult men that have been incarcerated. Okay, then he expanded it to adult men and teenage men, and then women. So as the years have gone by, but it really was focused on the prison population as opposed to the general population. And so there was always a lot of emphasis on one group of traits, and that was mostly surrounding ones related to crimin criminality. And those are the so-called antisocial personality disorder traits. Uh, but there are other traits that people, other people would say, other psychiatrists and psychologists, would say that are more have to do with the core problems with psychopathy. And, uh, and so if we look at those, and, and Robert here did a great job in, in, in breaking them down into three factors, two main factors. There's factor one, and factor one contains those traits that have, mostly have to do to how you relate to people, your interpersonal, sort of how you deal with them. And so with, with that, people who have this very glib uh, sort of personality, they're very talkative, they're very convincing and manipulative, those are all under trait one and the pathological lying. Uh, and, and so it's how you relate to people, really, and uh, in, a, in a social situation. And, and of course, with psychopathy, with those traits, you have somebody who's always looking through the other person. They, they're very careful. They're very good at reading people. Psychopaths are great at reading people. And even though they supposedly you know, have low empathy, they have low emotional empathy, but they have very good cognitive empathy. They know what you're feeling, which is why they're great predators. Okay. So it's not like they don't understand. They, they understand other people's feelings probably better than they do. It's just that doesn't, it doesn't resonate with them in an emotional way, enough to care. So it's just another tell that they use. And, and so there's that kind of factor one stuff. And factor two stuff is a, is a kind of a, a, a mixed bag having to do with this antisocial personality stuff, criminality, et cetera, but also uh, other interpersonal traits too. So you have these trait one and trait two, and there's some indication now that these traits may be partially inherited differentially from the mother and the father. So it may be the father that uh, gives rise to more of the traits having to do with factor two, criminality, whereas the, that kind of glib manipulation part may be more a mother to son and mother to daughter, in some cases past. So there's these different traits, and, and so the way hair, uh, set it up, it's on a scale of zero to 40 you could score. And a lot of people walking around, most people could score zero on this scale because they take, uh, they're interviewed. And it has to do with a very structured interview and you can't just do it yourself, right? And you score on each of these individual factors zero if you don't have that trait. You know, are you very manipulative? Zero, you're not at all. You're very truthful, honest. Uh, one, you do it a lot of times. Or two, you do it as a game all the time, you just get a buzz out of doing it. So those are the, th the three levels, and you add these all up in factor one and two, and the highest you can score is a 40. People who score 40 are bad, bad <laughs> okay. This these, is not a test you wanna do well on. Oh, no, 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 okay. no. And, and so the threshold for what you would categorically call a psychopath with his, with his test 
is, uh, is a 30 right. or a 28. And so if you're there or above, you're officially a psychopath. But the way psychiatry and psychology is going now and the way a lot of us are trying to push it is not to look at things categorically because nothing in biology or in medicine or behavior is categorical. It's not, it's, you know, even though we may want it in our courts and, you know, jurors want it. And so when you're saying categorical, you mean not just to look at a test. It has to be other things. In ca or, categorical, or you either... Am I a psychopath or not? Okay, so not a, a, a black and white situation. Not a black and white. Okay. And when you look at the case of like obesity, right? right? You're not either obese or not. Even though there's an obesity scale and insurance companies demand it and there's like, well, you're officially obese. But there are people who would count as obese who are in great shape. Well, how about they have other mitigating factors, you know, sumo wrestlers and some, you know, NFL football players are absolutely obese, but in wonderful shape, you know? so. So you say, well, uh, if you bring that into psychopathy, into these personality disorders, it's, you have all these traits. Are you low, middle, or high okay. in them? It's those traits that we can then associate with the genetics and associate with the brain patterns, PET scans, fMRI. But not the core categorical, are you a psychopath or not, but those traits you can. So it, it makes it more amenable to research and to quantification and to real answers.